to have Dr. Ho Kim, the Dean of the School of Public Health at Seoul University, National University in Korea. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to mention Dr. Kim is himself a Tar Heel. <laughs> he got his PhD <laughs> in biostatistics here. So from a group of Tar Heels to another, let's put our emoji hands together, which is our substitute for clapping nowadays, um, to welcome Dr. Kim. Right. Uh, I just don't know how to do it uh, <laughs> electrically, but a uh, uh, warm uh, hello uh, to everybody. Uh, I'm, uh, I have not been there for, for 20 years, I guess, uh, since I left uh, over there. But uh, I'm, I'm very, very, very happy uh, to have a chance uh, to lecture students in Chapel. And and uh, and I'm I'm very thank uh, for the uh, professors and organizers uh, for inviting me. So today uh, uh, I have uh, I started some motivation uh, uh, to flattening the curve. Uh, uh, this is not uh, my original work, uh, but uh, some uh, reporter. Harry Stevenson has a very nice uh, website over there uh, at the uh, uh, Washington Post. Uh, so let us start uh, doing some simulation by him. So uh, a healthy person uh, is infected after the contacting the sick person like this, 100% uh, for the uh, population purpose, um, I mean the simulation purpose. And, but in reality, uh, after uh, sick, the person has recovered actually, and uh, uh, be, uh, he became, uh, he or she became recovered person. Uh, so that is the graphical uh, information. So if we don't do anything, no intervention at all, then the situation is like this. Everybody uh, just moves freely, and uh, even uh, just one uh, contact uh, causes uh, contamination, I mean the infection, and then at a certain period, uh, he or she uh, recovered. Uh, take a look at uh, the number of patients over there, big uh, curve over there, and then those are the recovered uh, person. But uh, if uh, we do some uh, some something uh, making a wall, for example, some uh, quarantine, then, uh, but we cannot do it forever. So the, the gap uh, is opening uh, slowly so that uh, the people here, uh, uh, people started uh, get infected slowly but surely. But uh, compared to the flat, uh, I mean the uh, curve before, uh, the, it's becoming more flat. Uh, if we do something, and this uh, shows without the wall, uh, if we do some uh, distancing, so, so social distancing, uh, then means that some people just don't move at all. Then the uh, spread, uh, speed of spread is much slower, uh, slower, uh, so that uh, you see this kind of uh, graph uh, at the end. Uh, and if we put uh, more uh, uh, distancing and uh, more strict uh, measures, then uh, only few people just move and then uh, the infection uh, is spreading uh, much uh, slowly over there. So we just uh, did some simulation, uh, four uh, simulations and tried to uh, compare uh, the shape of the curve, uh, then we can see uh, those uh, two, uh, three, uh, four uh, uh, cases. And then the peak uh, are very, depend very different, uh, depending on the uh, measures uh, we, t we uh, take. So if you compare those two curves, uh, the total number of uh, patients, uh, are, uh, the, which is the area under the curve, uh, are almost similar, but the maximum uh, number of patients are quite different. So to maintain the total cases under certain uh, number uh, within our healthcare system capacity, it's very important uh, to minimize uh, the 
health burden uh, of our society. So that is one of the key concerns when uh, the COVID problem started uh, uh, in February in Korea. So uh, we collected, uh, uh, and that was also, uh, uh, say, mentioned in the US also. So uh, I personally think that US government uh, uh, did uh, uh, something, uh, should have done something uh, earlier uh, than, uh, uh, than what happened actually. Uh, so this is uh, one of the critics uh, about the uh, uh, government. And the magazine uh, Time uh, uh, selected uh, Dr. Anthony Pouch, uh, all you know, is one of the 10 most influential uh, people of uh, year 2020. And one of them, uh, 100 uh, people, uh, is uh, Dr. Jung Eun-kyung, who is the uh, director of Korean CDC. And she uh, did uh, a lot of things uh, uh, on uh, dealing these problems. And this uh, article in Time magazine uh, uh, was written by Moon Jae-in, who is the current president of uh, South Korea, uh, which shows the relationship with uh, Korean CDC and the Korean government. The collaboration uh, was uh, uh, quite successful, uh, I think. So, uh, and then this uh, article uh, shows the what kind of uh, measures or what kind of policies of South Korea uh, actually worked uh, for under this uh, scenario. This uh, article was written by my colleague, uh, Professor Sun Man Gwon uh, in our university. So you can uh, easily find, this is not a very uh, academic uh, paper at all. This is just a uh, uh, newspaper type uh, article. And in this article, he listed uh, those things uh, uh, were quite successful in Korea, uh, communication and transparency and minimum level of restrictions and contact uh, tracing, early uh, and mass testing and flexible and rapid response and universal health coverage and health fi uh, financing and uh, learning from the past. Those are all important, but uh, I, I'd like to highlight those three components, uh, restrictions. The government did not uh, implement severe restrictive measures such as lockdown. So we have never uh, implemented a local lockdown at all. So uh, I was uh, the all the uh, transportation uh, uh, just worked have worked uh, regularly, uh, and uh, so uh, lockdown was never uh, implemented uh, in, in South Korea, and the massive testing was quite successful uh, from the end of uh, uh, January. Government uh, implemented a huge uh, testing and. Uh, to prevent the spread. Uh, so, and then uh, the other thing is healthcare uh, system. So in South Korea, we do have a universal health uh, insurance system for everybody. So currently uh, the usual uh, people uh, don't pay anything for the screening and the treatment uh, of this disease. So uh, the, the, gen, uh, the healthcare system it's also very important uh, uh, to minimize the health burden also. And this is the paper uh, I'd like to discuss today. So I'm not going uh, to get into the technical details, but we'd like to show, uh, we'd like to show the uh, role of uh, uh, aggressive uh, di diagnostics, such as uh, pre-screening. That uh, is uh, our intention. So in this paper, we just analyzed the first uh, period, I mean, early stages of this, this is up to like April uh, this year. Uh, and uh, we tried to uh, show that this early intervention uh, was quite successful. And this is uh, the number of cases in South Korea. So first case was reported at the uh, end of uh, January, 
And this epidemic starts at uh, it's a, a small church called uh, a Protestant New Church, and then massive infection was occurred over there. And then this building is just a church, and then those are the pictures how they uh, did the services. So the uh, that was a uh, kind of infection was explosive uh, from that church and spread uh, this uh, town, a southern uh, city, uh, rapidly, and then uh, it uh, just became stabilized after a certain point. And uh, uh, as you may know, drive-through uh, screening test was uh, kind of uh, firstly invented uh, by Korean doctor over there. Uh, so. Uh, uh, it's kind of new idea, uh, an example of uh, the early intervention uh, kind of thing. And we think that was quite successful uh, to control the number of uh, infections. Uh, and and uh, government uh, just updated uh, guidelines uh, regularly uh, uh, from the first uh, reported cases uh, and and the drive-through screening was uh, one of the policy. Uh, okay. And uh, even, uh, uh, even now, the government uh, just uh, uh, announced the social distancing uh, up and down uh, regularly, because uh, uh, if uh, the social distancing is too much, everybody gets tired. So there's no way to maintain that kind of uh, uh, strict measures forever. So. Uh, sometimes uh, they uh, lower the uh, uh, policy, and sometimes they just uh, uh, just uh, rebel is going up. Uh, so it's a regular uh, change to make people less tired, I think. So uh, in terms of statistics, we try to apply the so-called gross curve, and logistic uh, gross curve was the main uh, model. Uh, to see, to explain the uh, phenomena. And the uh, uh, duration to peak and plateau uh, are the most important uh, estimators we try to estimate. Peak uh, could be interpreted as a day when the daily confirmed cases is highest, and plateau is kind of point, uh, the, uh, the numbers get uh, stabilized. Uh, so. Uh, uh, this is uh, very uh, easily defined uh, because the model is so simple and uh, we have only one uh, peak up to uh, that time. So defining this kind of uh, uh, parameters is not that difficult. Uh, and the important concept is uh, so-called uh, the, uh, the reproduction number. Uh, many of you already know that. That is the number of people that uh, uh, I don't see the screen over there. Uh, so that uh, one infected pop, uh, person will pass on uh, how many people? That is on average, that is the reproduction number. So uh, it is usually uh, uh, typed as RT, we call RT. So remember that is the function of time. Uh, so RT is allowed to change over time. And the uh, distribution of RT is uh, gamma distribution uh, with empirical mean and standard deviation. And of course, we did some <coughs> sensitivity analysis and then uh, uh, look at the seven day average. And doubling time is also very uh, important. Uh, that, that is number of days uh, patient got doubled actually. Uh, and then uh, we thought our uh, the uh, the government applied aggressive testing, and and, and this is the cumulative uh, incidence cases, as you can see, that grows uh, the uh, uh, the increase rapidly and, and kind of get stabilized, and number of uh, new cases, daily new cases, domestic and imported uh, cases uh, from the foreign countries. And uh, this is the city I, I was talking about, the uh, epicenter uh, of uh, that disease, uh, the, when uh, the church uh, located. And then uh, those are the surrounding provinces uh, which have high uh, 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 number of cases over there. 
And this is the uh, estimated uh, curve. And uh, this is the uh, uh, peak. And this uh, blue line uh, is estimated plateau. So we try to compare those uh, points uh, by a group of people and the characteristics of the people also. And it shows the RT over time. And uh, it was very high, but uh, it uh, became uh, stabilized. So the num uh, one is very important. If the reproduction number one is, then the number of uh, patient is just uh, getting uh, stabilized. But less than one or bigger than one uh, is uh, important, I think. This is doubly ta doubling time. Uh, as the patient uh, number uh, goes down, the doubling time goes up uh, rapidly which could be easily understood, I think. And uh, I just wanna uh, uh, skip uh, the R uh, reproduction number. It says a whole uh, close to four, uh, but at the peak is 2.2, uh, is but plateau is uh, uh, 0 0.5, less than one, of course, and uh, greater than uh, one over there. And so we tried to compare that uh, epicenter city, uh, Daegu, and the neighboring provinces and other area. So you can clearly see that uh, curves are quite different. And uh, the age group uh, is by age group. Interestingly, that uh, uh, the problematic uh, church, uh, there are uh, many young uh, ladies uh, um, in the church. So the incidence of the young people are much higher uh, compared to, uh, this is very unique uh, phenomena in Korea because of that uh, outbreak was started at the church and majority of them are young uh, ladies. So that uh, the lady uh, here, uh, you have high uh, cases for female also, and then high cases for the uh, younger group uh, rather than uh, the older group. And then uh, it shows the cumulative uh, cases and the uh, reproduction uh, numbers. Uh, try to compare them by age and region and gender. And uh, this is very important uh, uh, picture showing new cases and the number of tests. So the, as the number of uh, tests are uh, going up and becoming stabilized, uh, at this point, uh, the new cases just uh, started to uh, decrease again. So you can clearly see that this kind of uh, uh, test, uh, increasing number of tests, uh, is uh, associated with the decrease uh, of the uh, new cases, uh, clearly see. And then RT has similar pattern over here. Uh, if we increase number of uh, tests, uh, we observe the decreased number of uh, reproduction number also. So this is, uh, th those two uh, graphs are very important in concept, showing that the association uh, between the massive uh, test and uh, uh, number of cases. And mortality, uh, even though even though the uh, the Daegu that uh, city has high uh, incidence, the mortality is uh, almost same for other uh, area, which uh, means that uh, the this uh, uh, city was quite successful ma uh, maintaining uh, I mean the treatment of the patient, partially because of the medical system uh, uh, worked okay and partially because of the age, uh, young patients are the majority, so that the severity of the disease was not uh, uh, a big problem. But anyway, uh, the, the mayor of uh, Daegu, this city was kind of, uh, uh, did a good job uh, uh, maintaining and the uh, fertility rate uh, is uh, similar to other area. So uh, this shows the association of the uh, general situation of the hospitals or medical situation with a, a reduction in uh, fertility rate. So we observed uh, that uh, smallest p-value over there, number of negative pressure beds uh, and ECMO, uh, those are the uh, specialized uh, facilities for the uh, respiratory uh, patients. 
So the number of uh, patients, uh, number of hospitals or good uh, equipment uh, are very important uh, in reducing the uh, fertility rate. Uh, so we can uh, clearly see. So uh, the preparation uh, as a society, uh, this cannot be done uh, in days, actually. This uh, could be done uh, in years or 10 years or more than that. Uh, so uh, the preparation uh, was a uh, uh, very important factor uh, in reducing the fertility rate, uh, which uh, uh, was uh, one of our uh, aim of this study. Okay, so the key message was that uh, the, we try to characterize the epidemiological uh, aspects of this disease, uh, uh, spatial temporal pattern. Uh, and then uh, we also demonstrate association, uh, association uh, between the early uh, implement uh, of uh, aggressive measures and then transmission speed uh, and the production numbers are associated actually. And then the, in terms of policies, uh, uh, we can say uh, several things, uh, uh, which is not a topic I, uh, I don't think. Uh, and the, uh, the, uh, again, the implementation uh, uh, response, including and the preparation, uh, long-term preparation, uh, getting the, the medical uh, capability uh, is very important to reduce the uh, uh, fatality uh, rates, uh, uh, such as ECMO or other uh, 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 equipment. Having those uh, is also very important. Okay, so this is the summarized uh, uh, version uh, of uh, our paper, which uh, was published probably it took a long time, I think. We submitted in uh, sometime in May, but uh, accepted in uh, July, I think, and published in uh, September sometime. <laughs> so, uh, which was uh, a little bit slower, uh, I think. And uh, actually my uh, uh, main research area is uh, air pollution and health. So uh, I'd like to show you some uh, 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 research, uh, previous uh, research uh, of uh, those association. Uh, and this is uh, something you can uh, always uh, uh, think about. So the first paper shows that uh, lockdown uh, due to COVID-19 uh, caused a global air pollution decline. Uh, that's, uh, at least, uh, uh, not uh, unusual, uh, it's, it's easy to understand, but uh, the import, uh, this is the uh, median uh, for the previous years, and uh, this is the median uh, for this year. So uh, in terms of uh, NO2, uh, this is a reduction uh, due to uh, COVID-19 and distribution over there. And uh, PM2.5, also similar pattern, uh, this is the reduction. And, but ozone, uh, we observed the ozone uh, concentration was increased globally. But uh, as you can see, the effects are very different from, uh, from place to place. So the uh, general, uh, on average, uh, NO2 uh, uh, was uh, reduced a lot and PM is also reduced, but uh, we observed uh, uh, increase of ozone. But this uh, amount of increase or reduction uh, it's very different, uh, geographically very different. That is the key idea uh, about, uh, uh, key message of this paper. And this shows the, uh, the change uh, by, uh, uh, by uh, uh, place actually. So in NO2, most of the places uh, we observe, uh, they observe the reduction uh, with some uh, few uh, exceptions and PM2.5 here again. So uh, uh, that general trend uh, is, as I said, but uh, there are a few uh, exceptions also. So uh, uh, we always try to uh, 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 understand why the city and the patterns are different. And uh, in the United States, uh, let's look at the distribution of change of uh, NO2, mostly reduced 
but PM two point five, uh, some some in some area, as uh, upper uh, pattern is increased, uh, and ozone uh, is kind of in in between. So uh, you see the distribution uh, without NO two, uh, PM two point five, and ozone is kind of unclear. Uh, it's very different uh, from place to place uh, in uh, US actually. And uh, let's look at uh, the Italian case. Most of the casualties uh, we observe is in the northern part, which is uh, 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 which is uh, uh, industri industrialized area, uh, uh, which has a higher level of uh, air pollution. So uh, we clearly see the association between uh, COVID and the air pollution over there. And they uh, just uh, check the uh, uh, the simple correlation between uh, the NO2 and the COVID cases, for example, in this case. And they observe some part, uh, positive uh, association for all uh, air pollutant, actually. And then this is just a simple Pearson correlation and the p-value. So they uh, they reported that in, uh, in Italy, uh, in terms of uh, geographical correlation, they observe positive uh, correlation between air pollution and uh, COVID cases. Uh, and because the virus is kind of, we call the uh, bio aerosol, so, and causes uh, similar uh, problems, uh, uh, respiratory problems, virus and uh, air pollution, so there, uh, this kind of uh, phenomena can be uh, explained by a molecular, uh, uh, I mean, uh, molecular ways, but uh, it's very difficult uh, to prove this uh, by experiment. But uh, there are several uh, uh, explanations already. So uh, causing uh, similar patterns, uh, 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 causing problems in the respiratory system. So it, it is not very surprising, uh, but uh, this is a kind of well-known report uh, that published, I, I, I don't know yet, but uh, uh, it was published uh, early, um, I mean the April. And then in this report, uh, they uh, reported a mortality rate, uh, rate ratio uh, with uh, major uh, variables. And then they reported PM 2.5, uh, fine particulate matter is uh, uh, statistically significantly associated with uh, uh, mortality in this case. And then population density, of course, is associated also. Uh, but uh, the some uh, social factors like education, percent black, uh, and the age was also associated with. The, uh, the, this is a county level analysis. So, uh, the proper uh, interpretation is that the county uh, with high PM now 2.5 has higher uh, uh, incidence rate or higher mortality due to uh, uh, COVID-19. That would be the uh, proper uh, interpretation. The county with a uh, higher percentage black has higher uh, uh, mortality rate. Uh, uh, similarly, uh, uh, all the other uh, risk factors. So I think uh, uh, this kind of analysis should be done by individual level, but getting data uh, and uh, summarizing data uh, uh, and how, uh, what kind of statistical model uh, should be used is all uh, open. But the major difficulty is uh, getting data. I think individual, uh, uh, individual based data uh, is hard to get. Uh, so that uh, would be a very good uh, topic in the future, I guess. And, and uh, interestingly, uh, that uh, air pollution reduction, uh, because of the reduction of the uh, air pollution, uh, we have, uh, in theory, have uh, health benefit because of uh, the reduction of air pollution. For example, here, uh, this is the reduction uh, of uh, NO2 so that we have health benefit over there. So they try to compare health benefit due to the reduction of air pollution and the casualties of the uh, COVID-19 
uh, but in uh, and then uh, they but uh, it is too early to uh, say something about this kind of direct uh, comparison uh, we should be very careful about this but uh, uh, there are some papers uh, reporting, at least in China, because uh, China's air pollution level is very high. Uh, because of the air pollution reduction, uh, health benefit is uh, uh, significant. That uh, is reported uh, in many papers, I think. And uh, this is a, a very interesting paper I found about the 1918 influenza epidemic in US. and. Uh, 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 in summary, they found that the infant mortality and illiterate and, and the usage of coal is uh, 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 those kind of factors made huge difference of the, uh, the mortality due to this uh, influenza. Social economic factors are very important. And this is the distance from the World War I uh, uh, ship, uh, I mean the arrival of the soldiers from the Europe because the origin was Europe, the uh, uh, so distance uh, from those uh, soldiers from Europe uh, is another uh, uh, important factor. So this kind of, uh, again, and the socio-economic factors as well as uh, environmental factors are very important factor uh, deciding, uh, I mean the risk factor of the influenza mortality, uh, even uh, in the old days. So this is uh, 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 what I uh, prepared today. So research question uh, would be who are the most susceptible individual? As a public health researcher, susceptibility is uh, uh, always important factor, uh, individual level and the uh, social level. And the, what is the role of air pollution uh, in uh, the spread of virus? It's another unanswered and very uh, important question. And then air pollution and severity of COVID-19 is also quite possible uh, because both of them have uh, problems in the respiratory system. So there may be some uh, synergistic uh, effect between them. And the and the uh, other uh, environmental factors uh, like uh, 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 like greenness, uh, which is uh, I'm very in interested in, uh, uh, and uh, other environmental factors, noise uh, or some stress, environmental stress, and socioeconomic uh, variables, uh, 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 very interesting risk factors. And then, as I said, the uh, uh, reduction of air pollution could mean something uh, in uh, in this kind of analysis also, and uh, the temporal and spatial uh, analysis uh, is a key a tool uh, to understand the association uh, of risk factors with uh, uh, COVID mortality. So, uh, and it, it takes uh, it's a very technical uh, question, but. Uh, realizing importance of the uh, temporal and spatial pattern uh, is the one of the most important factor uh, analyzing this kind of uh, data. That uh, is the uh, last uh, message uh, from me. Okay, this is for today. Uh, this picture, my first daughter, uh, uh, was born in uh, 1995 in Chapel. Uh, and that picture was took uh, in 1999, uh, January, uh, in front of old, uh, old well. And she is studying uh, computer, computer science now <laughs> as a graduate student. And she is also very interested in uh, analyzing COVID data. So she helped me preparing <laughs> this material yesterday, actually. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Kim. Can we put our emoji hands together once again? <laughs> I also, that, that, that last sentence, God is not a tar hole, why is the sky Carolina blue? My dad says that all the time. He is also a tar hole. So. <laughs> it's good to hear it again. So we have, um, our group two has prepared questions for you, but as always, if anybody has a question, please unmute your mic and jump in. But for now, I'm gonna hand it off to them.
Um, thank you for your presentation. I have a question about um, your research on coronavirus and climate change. Because um, I think these are like you have pre you previously have done many research on climate and is there anything that is different in terms of uh, methodology or the models for analyzing the coronavirus uh, different from the ones for climate change like how the how the data collection is kind of different or how the analyzing part is different uh uh i think i think uh the in in terms of uh analyzing covid data basically that's uh, medical data uh so the uh, medical information uh like the disease uh previous uh, disease uh, or uh the patient uh condition uh, whether uh, he or she has, uh, for example, diabetes or hypertension, uh, that is very, very important analyzing COVID data. So, uh, but uh, I mean, in air pollution or climate change, ecological approach uh, is sometimes adequate, I think. If you don't have individual data, uh, if you know the number of, uh, say, uh, uh, mortality in a certain reason, uh, that uh, could be used, but in COVID data, uh, uh, it is not uh, a good data if you don't have uh, individual uh, history of that person. So uh, in theory, the COVID data is, uh, you need more uh, information, individual level, now, as well as uh, uh, environmental level also. So the model uh, is so-called individual-based uh, model. Uh, which is uh, much more uh, complicated and computationally intensive even. So, uh, so some epidemiologists, are all, uh, some of them are quite interested in uh, uh, describing the pattern, uh, uh, ignoring the individuals, uh, individual characteristics of uh, uh, that kind of medical history. Uh, that uh, could be uh, applicable uh, if you are interested in comparing, say, uh, countries, that kind of ecological approach uh, would be applicable, uh, but uh, it has a huge uh, limitation uh, in terms of uh, causal influence. Uh, the ecological study has big limitation uh, to make a causal uh, uh, conclusion, I would say. So uh, try to check the uh, so-called ecological uh, fallacy. Uh, if you just apply ecological uh, analysis, uh, you have big problem distinguishing association and causal effect, uh, which is very different. Uh, so to uh, analyze properly, uh, the, uh, it's better to have uh, individual data, uh, which is uh, quite challenge, uh, quite a challenge in uh, actual situation. So my recommendation is just look at the ecological data first, uh, try to compare the societies or try to see the time trend. Uh, that is uh, sometimes useful, but to make uh, actual uh, evidence uh, or policy, uh, one has to uh, do some uh, individual based analysis. Uh, that is my uh, recommendation. Okay. okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. But uh, I've done a lot of researches on uh, uh, climate change uh, and air pollution uh, on health. Uh, and I applied ecological uh, design a lot. Uh, uh, in that time, in that uh, analysis, uh, how to treat a uh, time trend and spatial uh, pattern uh, is always a uh, difficulty. Uh, so uh, in terms of statistics, uh, you better to study so-called time series analysis to analyze uh, uh, time trend, uh, temporal data, and spatial analysis like GIS uh, to see the spatial pattern. Uh, so once you understand the temporal and spatial pattern, 
uh, you have some idea uh, how to combine those two factors. And maybe you want to see the, the temporal patterns are different on some country and uh, to other countries. Then you are uh, questioning that there is an interaction between time and space, uh, which is a very good uh, research topic. Uh, so uh, generally, I think that uh, Europe or Western society uh, was quite successful in uh, uh, industrialization uh, in 19th century. Uh, so they have some kind of that kind of temporal uh, pattern, but uh, Eastern society started doing that uh, much later. But they also have some similar time trend also. But the time trends of those two uh, cultures are necessarily uh, the same. So if you allow a uh, difference of uh, time trend over two spaces, then uh, we are talking about the interaction between time and space, for example, in a very uh, big uh, picture. Uh, so uh, that, uh, that is uh, becoming <laughs> very, uh, so uh, very, uh, uh, complicated, but anyway, that's uh, to understand uh, time trend and spatial trend uh, are the two uh, key factors uh, to explain this kind of uh, phenomena, I think. So uh, as your undergrad student, uh, try to uh, learn some, uh, some techniques about uh, uh, analyzing time data, uh, temporal data, or uh, spatial data uh, would be a uh, 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 something uh, you need to uh, prepare if you want to do something <laughs> about uh, uh, this kind of data analysis, I think. Okay. So, Kim Park Sanim, thank you so much for your lecture. Mm -hmm. um, I was wondering if you could elaborate a little more on um, your link between air pollution and uh, COVID-19 fatalities, mm -hmm. specifically on um, how you sort of separated uh, population density from pollution as a contributing factor. Um, mm -hmm. uh, just because uh, high population density is already, you know, linked to high pollution. Mm -hmm. So, um, mm -hmm. how 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 much of the impact is due directly to pollution? Um, mm -hmm. rather than the uh, uh, population density, that sort of uh, distinction between the association and causal effects that you mentioned. Right, sure, sure, sure. So, uh, 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 so uh, let's uh, think about the very simple case. Uh, you, if you have uh, two factors uh, and one uh, response variable, the simple way would uh, be just uh, univariate analysis. You, you just put uh, the variable you are interested in uh, not adjusting anything, and then uh, your estimate uh, would be uh, biased, I think. So the simple way, simplest way is to consider so-called multivariate uh, analysis. Uh, multiple regression uh, would be uh, the method. After controlling for, uh, so say, population density, then you want to see the effect of air pollution after adjusting for uh, population density. That would be the second stage, uh, but still uh, that kind of approach doesn't guarantee causal uh, association at all. So uh, there is another topic called causal inference in the statistics textbook. So you may want to, uh, in this kind of uh, context, uh, the so-called uh, the uh, uh, instrumental variable uh, is a well-known approach. Uh, to see the causal uh, influence, which is uh, too much for today's discussion. But uh, there are several ways to make a uh, causal influence to see the effect of air pollution. Air pollution has uh, that kind of uh, problem. Uh, all the uh, variables are correlated. Uh, as you said, air pollution is associated with uh, population density, uh, as well as uh, uh, you know, the socioeconomic uh, conditions, uh, all the other factors. So, the, so that all the factors have high correlation, the so-called multicorneality problem. Uh, so uh, there are uh, many uh, things uh, we can do as a statistician, but uh, I would recommend uh, to apply uh, 
step two, a multiple regression uh, approach. And step three is uh, some causal influence techniques, uh, including uh, instrumental variable. Uh, that uh, is the uh, current stage of the research in uh, air pollution epidemiology. Uh, Thank you so much. All right. <laughs> Mm. Uh, I, I don't want to uh, uh, discourage you at all, but uh, I just want to give you some uh, motivation uh, uh, to, uh, to do more, actually. <laughs> <laughs> all right, but uh, nowadays, uh, some uh, website, uh, like uh, provided by uh, Johns Hopkins or uh, University of Washington, was what uh, is the name of that uh, site? Is our world in data? Uh, those sites are just wonderful. They provide uh, quality data, very very good uh, quality uh, data. Uh, so you can uh, visit there and uh, uh, do something. You can actually draw a nice uh, graph, time series uh, graph or. Uh, GIS graph uh, using uh, their uh, information. So visiting there and spend some time uh, is uh, quite uh, useful. I, I found it very uh, useful and insightful to spend time uh, over there uh, to check uh, my hypothesis over there uh, using uh, data they have. Uh, it's a very good uh, practice, I mean, uh, uh, it's very good to spend your time <laughs> if you are not very busy <laughs> over there. So I, I strongly recommend that also. So D Dr. Kim, maybe I could uh, make one comment and ask you a question of myself. So I think the comments, I think you were referring to, were you referring to IHME, the Institute for Health Metric Evaluation? Yeah, sure. I think it is. Mm -hmm. that's, the, that's the institute at the University of Washington. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And Maybe I could ask you a question. I mean, so, you know, you were asked a, a, a few minutes ago about um, mm -hmm. about effects of climate change and health. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What what f health factors do you consider in that research? I mean, is it just directly people dying from heat, or is it people dying from high air pollution that might be caused by mm -hmm. climate change? Can you expand a little bit on that? Uh, uh, yes, that is a very uh, uh, wide uh, range of uh, health uh, impact uh, due to climate change. And uh, the, uh, the effect, uh, even in the uh, COVID uh, coronavirus, uh, some researchers are trying to relate uh, uh, that problem uh, to uh, climate change. Uh, there is uh, some, something to do with the connection between uh, human and animal, you know. So uh, as a uh, uh, result of human activities, uh, some uh, wild animals uh, have uh, no place to uh, live. So they is more becoming more frequent to uh, visit uh, human. So there is a the interaction uh, has increased actually, which increased the probability of uh, interchanging viruses which is a big problem for uh, uh, humans. Uh, that is the connection between uh, even the viral disease and uh, uh, human health. And other uh, infectious is like vector bone disease, malaria, uh, for example, the, because of the changing weather, uh, the, uh, the condition of mosquito has changed. So the distribution of that mosquito uh, is, uh, is changing. Uh, it's hard to, uh, we have some others, but uh, as a consequence, uh, the, uh, the distribution of a human patient is also changing. Uh, so infectious disease are clearly related to climate change, heat effect, and uh, the wildfire. Uh, you already experienced the wildfire uh, in the West Coast, uh, which is clearly related to climate change. Uh, uh, in the previous years, uh, like sea level rise uh, or other problems, mainly uh, they were problems for the uh, developing countries, uh, as I said, uh, the infectious diseases uh, uh, or uh, 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 sea level rise uh, was a uh, uh, tropical, uh, I mean, the typhoon, 
uh, the main target, I mean, the uh, people, susceptible people are people in the developing countries. But uh, as you see the wildfires in the West Coast and the Australia, yeah, you see, uh, that uh, climate change uh, problem is not uh, uh, the problem for developing countries anymore. It's, it's, it's so, uh, only the problem for US even, uh, developed countries. So it's a problem for everybody. So that is a growing concern uh, in uh, this uh, uh, climate change society. And uh, back to your question, uh, infectious disease, uh, uh, heat, uh, uh, increased mortality and mobility, and, uh, and some, uh, some respiratory problems like uh, allergy or that kind of uh, uh, problem, uh, we don't 100% uh, understand uh, the mechanism. So some, uh, so that kind of allergy and other things. And then because of the sea level rise uh, in the, some countries, they have, uh, they already uh, experienced the, uh, the social problems of uh, migration, you know. And, the, and even in, in Korea, we have a paper uh, showing the association between uh, heat and suicide. So depression is a big problem for climate change also. Uh -huh. Some of you already experienced that. So the mental uh, disease is another uh, emerging area in the climate change uh, and health area, uh, like uh, and, and uh, susceptible uh, uh, people are uh, people who have chronic disease like hypertension, uh, diabetes, and some kidney disease. And those are the people who are particularly susceptible. Uh, 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 on the change of uh, uh, weather, the climate. Uh, and those are the, some topics uh, top of my head. But, uh, but all the health uh, uh, problems are related to climate change. And WHO is uh, uh, studying uh, uh, the climate change is one of the major issues uh, in WHO already, I think, uh, as well as air pollution. Uh, and then air pollution also, uh, also is related, uh, related to uh, climate change. The emission, important concept here is the emission uh, is the amount of air pollution we are emitting, but concentration is the actual level of the air pollution. Concentration and emissions are different. Uh, there is some uh, chemical mechanism uh, in the air uh, forming PM 2.5 uh, and ozone uh, uh, under the uh, influence of uh, temperature and sunlight or that kind of thing, uh, we don't uh, understand uh, perfectly. So the how, uh, what is the impact of uh, changing air, air pollution uh, because of the climate uh, change is still an uh, open question. But uh, many of uh, experts said uh, uh, ozone, uh, rapid increase of uh, ozone is predicted. Uh, within uh, 10 or 20 years, I think. Uh, so the ozone uh, is uh, very uh, concerning, uh, in, especially in the United States, uh, because of the increase of uh, temperature, I guess. So those are the topics I can uh, uh, think about uh, right now. Uh, so, thank you. And, Yes, okay. thank you. Thank you very much. I, I need to let them go on to their next class now, okay. but could we all give them another, Dr. Kim, another round of applause? And thank you so much for coming and speaking to us today. Yeah, thank thanks you very much. Yeah. Thanks a lot. Yeah. This has been very enlightening. Uh, yeah, yeah. It was my uh, pleasure. <laughs> okay, thanks. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Bye bye. <laughs>